All right, people, welcome, welcome back to another episode of Bad Dating Chronicles, where I get to talk to people, they tell me about their bad date, bad hookup, bad miscommunication in this world that we love to call the sus world of dating. So, I would love to welcome my next guest, Mr. Michael Dickerson. What's going on, sir? Chilling, chilling. I feel that. I feel that. All right, sir. So, you know why we're here. You tell me your experience. Floor is yours, sir. Uh, my worst bad dating experience, um, I was dating this girl. We used to drink a lot together. Because she was, you know, playing with the powder until we moved in together. So, yeah, she was very, she, I didn't realize how much of a powder head she was until we moved in together. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so that was like my worst, my worst date. That was like my worst dating experience. Dating with somebody that does that. So it's like, should be happy one minute. And then once she start going skiing, her attitude change. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's, let's dive in this a little bit. Okay. So first of all, how did you meet this, this, this lady? How'd you meet her? Um, I met her just walking the streets one day and she was looking very pretty. I walked up to her, asked her name. Let me take her on a date. So one date led to the next one. And then months later, we just, you know, got serious and moved in together. Okay. So in the times that you were dating her, did it ever come across that, you know, she was an addict? No, no. Because we used to go eat, drink together, pop bottles together, but she'll go to her house or go to my house, but she ain't doing nothing right. So I was like, okay, cool. She drink and smoke weed. That's cool. But yeah, yeah, okay, the usual. But you never suspected, you know, that she loved the white lines or the white life. Yeah. <laughs> I never suspected it from her <laughs> until we moved in and I saw her do it and I was like, whoa. And then she actually do I want something. I'm like, I don't do that. No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> what i was expecting like <laughs> i'm actually oh my god there's so much things to ask okay first of all look man i don't want to make this a race thing but was she black <laughs> yeah she was caribbean so i don't want to make this a race thing yeah i, I really don't but it's like when you hear people like they doing coke, you most you mostly hear like, oh yeah, white people go skiing, not niggas. So it's one of those things like you know, you have to ask, but then you don't want to. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so she she liked to ski a lot. Now, like was she doing a lot a lot when y'all moved in together? Um, at a week, should Poppy go skiing like three or four times a week? But I just be like, I'm gonna stay away from you when you do that shit. I don't want no parts of that. What did she do for a living? Um, she was a a cook. She was a cook and a bartender. Okay. But she told me she told me it keeps her up, like it gets her energy higher, keeps her up and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. See, I I don't know because I don't do drugs and. I don't ski either. I, I don't even mess with white women. So that's just go to show you like how I try to stay away from it. Everything white. Yes, yeah, just almost. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right. So when did the conflict really start to rise where you told her, yeah, I ain't dealing with this no more homegirl. Like I can't deal with you and I can't deal with your drug habit. Um, it's got worse when she was high and she'll pull out weapons, she'll throw things at me. Like, she'll throw TV remotes at me. She'll take my PlayStation remote, throw it at me. Throw glasses, glass jars of nacho cheese at me. Like, we'll get in an argument while she's intoxicated. And she yes. All right. So, like, did you ever, like, have to file, like, a report or get a restraining order or call the cops or anything like that? Um, yeah, I did. I did. I had to call, like, I didn't call police, but um the neighbors called police because the situation got worse and she stabbed me with a butcher knife what 
Yo, you're dead crying over here. Because, <laughs> like, okay, but Mike, it's like you don't hear these things every day. Because you almost, it's almost the opposite. You always hear, like, maybe the man beating up on the woman doing something. But never the sis, you'll hear, like, oh, yeah, this whole didn't stab me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, how bad was it? Like, did you have to get stitches or? Um, yeah, I had to get like 30 stitches in my back. Damn. Yeah. She was very, and it all started because she was drunk and I took away the, the liquor. I took the liquor from her while she was drunk. I said, you don't need no more. And I took the liquor from her. And that yeah, just. You can't... Yeah, bro. You can't cut off an alcoholic like that. You got to wait till they go to sleep first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So as you go through that, like in that lesson, what did you learn from that? I learned from that lesson. I never drunk ever again. So I've been three years clean from drinking alcohol. From that lesson, lesson, I learned to know your limit when you're drinking. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you're dealing with a partner, try to know her limit too. If she know she can't handle her liquor don't drink with her but here here's one thing I, that i didn't ask what made you decide to move in with her to begin with like how long was y'all dating before you said oh okay let's do this um like six seven months it was six okay. seven months so it was a little time uh, i was yeah. thinking maybe y'all moved in like first like month or two together so. yeah. now that's dangerous <laughs> Trust me, it was already dangerous from the start. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was red flags, and I just kept ignoring them. Like, 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 bro, was the booty that good for you? Just, just nah, ignore I can't the red flags. Lie. I can't lie. That Caribbean is different. That Caribbean cat is different. Mm, I, I don't know. I've never had Caribbean. I mean, I had jerk chicken, but you know, never jerk vagina. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Bro, I'm just saying, like, you know, we all do it. We all make some dumb, dumb decisions, especially as us males when it comes yeah. to women, but never to where our life is in jeopardy. So yes. I don't I don't know where to go else from here. I, I really don't. Because you literally almost lost your life. Wow. That's yeah, um yeah. you like do you have any more interaction with her or you just went no, straight? No, I just no blocked on social media and we just I don't know which yet and yeah, just stay away from me. So when you become big in the industry and you think she's like gonna hit you up like, hey babe, you wanna come over one time so we can mm -hmm. continue? <laughs> I'm like, I'm good. I'm not rekindling nothing. <laughs> So with her dealing, with you dealing with her, what has that taught you when it comes to dealing with other women besides the, you know, uh, sober route? Um, just to get to know a woman more before I even move a step further with them. Just, mm -hmm. just sit back and observe a woman, how she carry herself, what habits does she have, does she do anything? Just observe more. And my problem with her, I wasn't observing. I was just, I can't lie, I was just so busy on having sex. I didn't really see the red flags. So my lesson would be like, just be more observant and just watch how fem female carry herself. You know, it reminds me of a time um, that I had met this girl and I was like smitten with her. And so I was like, oh yeah, let's move in together. Little did I know, like I knew she had a daughter, knew that. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I dated a woman with kids. But what mm -hmm. I did not know is she had a crazy baby daddy. And what I mean by crazy, like they were living together in the house, like they were supposed to get married, but he was the type to where he was truly possessive. I mean, this nigga was crazy, crazy possessive to where he would let her go to work, but then he would go with her and then sit outside her whole work shift, like her whole entire work shift with the baby in the back. So it's like, it was almost the same as like, if you go to work, we all go to work together. Oh, that <laughs> yeah. is crazy. That's more like psychotic. 
Mm-hmm. This like, what if the baby's sorry. hungry? What you gonna do in the back seat? No, nah, he would he would bring food with her. Like he was that caring for their daughter. Um, but I did not know this. Like she never told me just how bad she was like, Oh, I got a crazy baby daddy, but I didn't know it until like I actually met her, met him, and he seemed cool. He was a cool guy, but then you know, people start showing little inkages of who they are. Like you say, you just pay attention to who they are. And I remember what we had even moved in together. We got an apartment. I remember that he was helping her move in her stuff into the apartment we were sharing, but he kept like looking me up and down. Like I was a problem. Like I wasn't supposed to be here. Like I'm the help. <laughs> it, 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 it was it was so messed up. Oh, it was God. so messed up. That's yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, they got right back together after her and I broke up. So I guess misery loves company. Yes, yes. <laughs> so other than that, crazy, crazy uh time for you. Is it has there ever been another time to where Maybe you like got with someone that it didn't work out or someone you wanted to get with that it just maybe never happened. Yeah. Um, a couple of chicks in New York, I try to talk to and then they be like, oh, to hang out with me, it costs money. I'm like, huh? Oh yeah, no, I'm good. So. You know what? It's interesting. It's interesting that you say that. So you being a true New Yorker through and through. Yes. Um, What's it like dating there? Like, is there is it really what they say? Like, women up there is really aggressive than most women anywhere else. Yeah, they they women are women are they act like men. Like a lot of the females act like men because they're so aggressive, but they're still a woman at the same time. So it's like they very aggressive and they money hungry. A lot of New York women are money hungry. They like men more money. So it's like. If you have money, they don't they don't care how you treat them, what you do to them, as long as you get their hair done, get their nails done, buy them new purses. Like a lot of women in New York are money hungry. So what uh what borough are you from? Staten Island. Okay. All right. Staten Island. Oh, Wu Tang, yes. Yeah. My favorite. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, and so like you from New York, but you are in Atlanta now, right? Yes. Yes. All right. So with you moving from basically Staten Island to New York, what's that transition been like for you? Um, from New York to Atlanta, it's like, it's more different because I'm so used to the city life. I'm used to stores in every corner and not in Atlanta. It's like stores are far. So you got to learn how to drop and I'm transitioning into that right now, learning how to drop. But it's like yeah. the transition is different, but it's also good because the rent's cheaper and you get spacious for your your rent. Meanwhile, in New York, we all living on top of each other. Out here, mm -hmm. you your neighbors be down the street so you can party, have fun, play music. Don't have to worry about no neighbors calling on you. But the transition is kind of better for the way of living. But I just hate that everything closes early. Tell me about it. I'm from Detroit, so I understand. Mm -hmm. There's like, there's a liquor store, church, McDonald's. Liquor store, church, McDonald's. Like, <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but that's really how it is. You'll find a liquor store and a gas station catty corner from each other. And yeah. then me being where I'm at now, it's not even like that. So I mm -hmm. trust me, bro. I understand. Some of yeah. this country living, if you're used to being in the city almost all your life, the transition yeah. is mad different. It's so yeah. different. People yeah. understand. Especially if you've never been to the city, you just, you don't know. You just don't yes. understand. <laughs> yes. And so, um, you know, you coming from basically up north to down south, like what made you want to make that move to begin with? Um, I wanted to further my acting and modeling career. So I came out here during a pandemic. So I came during the pandemic and I said, this don't work. I'm going to go back to New York, but mm -hmm. it has worked since I've been here. So every time I try to go back to New York, a new opportunity popped up. So I feel like God was just telling me to sit down and just let things play out out here. So now I'm still a couple years later, I'm still here. So Absolutely. it worked out for the best. 
that, that's definitely a blessing. So now you being in Atlanta, what are the women like there and compared to New York women? The women, I like the women down here better because I can't lie, the women down here, they got their stuff together. Meanwhile, New York, they do, but at the same time, women in New York don't have their own place, their own shit. Meanwhile, women down south are bosses. Like, own car, own house, own business. They bossed up. So, it's like, the difference is, like, it's more quality of women down south than New York. Yeah, just don't get lost, because that woman might really be a man, bro. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yo, you're crazy, yo. I, you know what? I might be crazy, but we all read almost the same stuff about what's going on in Atlanta, the mecca of um, the other community. Because I'm not going, I'm not going to disrespect anybody. You live your life how you want to. But then again, it also comes down to being open and honest about who you are and what you want. And it almost yeah. seems like not a lot of people is willing to do that. So yeah. this is the cap for that. So yeah, you got to be careful. You come to Atlanta. This is the mm -hmm. this is the capital. A lot of people has got caught up coming to Atlanta and yeah, thinking it's a female and it's really a dude. So yeah, yeah. and you check that out of that for sure. So <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yo, you yo, that's bugged out for real. Are you telling the truth though? You you think I'm wilding, but I'm I'm serious, Mike. Like, you you know, telling the truth though. You yeah, got to. You you really do. You got to be honest, and that's that's where that's where this whole thing, cause Bad Dating Chronicles, because we've all had our stories, we've all had our experiences when it comes to dating. But why is because people get into these different types of situations to where they're not honest about yes. what they want or what they're going for. Like if yes. you go out with a chick and you tell her, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm trying to, you know, maneuver to where I'd be better. That's telling you what's going on. But if this yeah. chick saying, oh yeah, I'm just going out with you, not telling you that she got dudes, she got a dude or dudes or kids or some type of situation, you be thinking, oh yeah, this girl can be bae. And then you find out two months later, she shacked up with some other nigga. So yeah. it's... Yeah. <laughs> It's not fair. It is yeah. really not fair. And then it makes it seem like the man is not doing their things when we are. We're trying yeah. to put ourselves out there. And it it sucks. It really yeah. sucks. Yeah. I'm so glad I'm in a relationship. I'm comfortable and I'm happy where I'm at because, you know, my girl that I'm with, she's beautiful, head to toe, inside and out. And that's yeah. all you can ask for. And some people out here, they just really, as the saying goes, perpetrating a fraud because there are a lot yeah. of frauds out here. A lot, a lot. So, you know, you stay safe, bro. Um, you know, don't get caught up. You know, just go like this real quick before you know you go kiss that neck. So you <laughs> said go like this. I'm done. You gonna rub her neck while you kiss her? Yeah, well before you kiss her, just you know, a little something like this. <laughs> oh, you got something right here. Make sure you feel it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. this interview is fucking amazing, y'all. Hey, hey, I, I'm just being, be, be real and Thanks. a little honest. But then also, it's just, it makes you think. Like, people say they want the moons and the stars. But how can yes. you give someone the moons and the stars if you're not even willing to leave the earth? That is true. That is true. Got it. I mean, it's not that hard. It really isn't. Yeah. So, um... I won't keep you long, man, but please go ahead and shout out, you know, how they can reach you since you're a beautiful model and all that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm just saying you're a handsome man. You are. There's nothing wrong with telling another man he's handsome. So go ahead. Drop your social so they can reach you. Check me out on Instagram. Mike the model. M-I-K-E-T-H-A-M-O-D-E-L-88 or hashtag Mike the model. And all my stuff will pop up on platforms. Shout out to the bro Will. For giving me opportunity to interview on his podcast. You make sure I go support him, go check him out and hit him up. We out here from New York to Detroit. We making boss moves. Absolutely. Yo, man, it was a pleasure. Thanks for coming on and telling me your wild, wild story about yes. your skiing Jamaican cat. So I appreciate it. 
<laughs> so, anytime, bro. Yes, people. So that was my guest, Mr. Mike the Model. You make sure y'all go check him out. He's a dope guy. You know, he's saying he's coming up in this world, in this industry, just trying to do the right thing and better himself. And there is nothing wrong with that. You do everything you possibly can to better yourself because there's a lot of people out here who would try to hold you down. Remember, we almost live in a crab in a bucket society where you see one crab trying to make it up, but everybody else will pull them down. Don't do that. It's not fair to nobody and not even yourself. So remember, this has been another episode of Bad Dating Chronicles here on the Second Look Network here on YouTube. If you did enjoy the video, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you can see more coming up. So this has been another episode. I'm Will. Y'all take care.